Good afternoon and welcome to our QuickBooks Enterprise Solution Inventory Session in February of 2012. Um, we're going to take a look at um, QuickBooks Inventory. Inventory is an area in QuickBooks that a lot of companies get a little frustrated with because of some of the limitations, but we will take a look at what is in Enterprise and talk a little bit about how to work around some of the issues that occur in inventory and also um, what you may find as you work with it. We'll also be looking at pricing, which is a particular issue that's related to inventory, um, but a lot of clients do seem to have issues with this particular thing. So this is the inventory item list. If I add a new item, you'll see I have a choice of a service, inventory part, inventory assembly, so on and so forth. We're going to focus on inventory parts, inventory assemblies, and groups. We're not going to take much of a look at the other items, which are a little bit simpler. So let's take a look at basic setup of an inventory part. We have an item name or item uh, number, which is fairly straightforward. So let's say we're going to do a widget. If we want to group items under other items, primarily for display purposes, we can do that. We might have a manufacturer's part number that we wanted to keep up with. And if we have unit of, units of measure, uh, we might put something in here. Units of measure are only necessary if you have a situation like you buy in cases, but you sell in eaches. So if you do have that, you may want to turn on units of measure if it's not turned on and have your units of measure here. In this particular case, you could, if you have units of measure turned on, you can tell the inventory item, I buy in cases and I sell in eaches and there are 24 items in a case. Then you have a description. This description is going to be shown on purchase transactions. Description over here is on sales transactions. By default, if we type something in here, like blue widget standard, it'll be copied over to the sales transaction area, although you can change it if you want to. This is the item cost. So let's say it's $10. And let's say the sales price then is $25. Markup is calculated. I want cost of goods sold to go into this account. You can have, of course, multiple cost of goods sold accounts. I can set a preferred vendor if I want one. Um, I can also set the sales account that this particular item goes into. And I can store it in different asset accounts. The reorder point is the point at which the system will tell you uh, you need to reorder the item. So if I have 50 of these, it won't show up on the re reorder list. If I have fewer than 25, it will show up on the reorder list. You can put an on-hand value and a total value here. That's fine. Uh, make sure if you do that your total value is actually, as you see, extended. When I put 10 here, it will multiply out the cost times the on hand, but do make sure that you put the actual value of the inventory. If you're converting from another system and you bought five of these 10 for $50 and you bought five of them for $25, you want to put $75 here. Otherwise, the value of your inventory is going to be incorrect. And what date do I want this to be as of? Um, I might want to do it as of the last day of the month, something like that. If you have custom fields set up, they'll show up here and you can put uh, custom fields on your items. If you don't, you can define fields. Let's say that the color um, of the hose is important to you and we want to use this. Notice that this says required on. I'm going to clear this so that it won't require these items. If you check this required on either one of these, it will require you to fill it in um, in order to leave the item. So let's go red, and this one is blue. Fingers on the wrong keys. 
and I can't type B L U E. Okay. Um, I can also have the system check the spelling. Notice on the markup here, I can set a different markup uh, if I want to for the item, and I can have the system, and this is in 2012 edition, I can have the system update the sales price or not update the sales price when the cost changes depending on what I want to do. And I can put in notes about the item. And when I say OK, that item will be added. Blue Widget Standard, it is an inventory part. Mm -hmm. Now let's take a look at an assembly. And we're going to call this a widget package. Um, if I purchase it from a vendor, it's like any other item number. I can check that. But usually an assembly is going to be something that I manufacture in-house. And let's say we sell a widget package for 150 And then down here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to select the items that make up this particular widget. And notice that I can include um, a number of different things. And I can also say there's one of these, or let's say there are five widgets in there, and there's one of these items in there. Notice that the price is, uh, the sale price is not necessarily related to the cost. So let's make that 650 and let's go up here to the cost. Notice the link here. If I hit what is this cost, you're going to see a definition of what the cost is. This is where you enter the cost. Um, and notice that you can put a component markup and some other things in there. This is not necessarily, as you can see here, the sum of the item cost. So I can put 550 in here if I want to. And then cost of goods sold account, inventory account, and income account I select as well as the tax code, taxable or non-taxable. Build point, let's say, is 1. On hand, I've got 0 at a total value of 0. At 1215, I have the same options here as the other. Notice if I hit the print button and then the preview, I can get a list of what's in the item, kind of a bill of materials list if I want it, and a summary. So we'll save the assembly. And now we're going to create a group. And a group is very similar to an, an inventory assembly. Notice that it asks for less information. It does not ask for a selling price. It does not ask for a cost. Um, a group is simply a way to group items that you enter. It's like a shorthand for entering an item. So let's suppose I want to enter removal, and I want to come down here, and I want to put one of these in, and I want to put some labor in, and I'm going to go and find my widget. and put it in, and then I'm going to come back and I'm going to say one quantity, ten quantity, one quantity, five. And now I have a group. Again, I have the same kind of information options on the group that I had on other items. Now, let's have a look at the difference between inventories and groups. I'm going to close the item list, go over here to a sales order. And we'll just go back to a previous sales order that's already created. And I'm going to come down here, and I'm actually going to put a widget on this. Notice that I get the standard kind of display on the widget. Now I'm going to put a widget uh, assembly. Excuse me. 
I'm going to put a widget package. on this order and it tells me there aren't any on hand and then I'm going to put a widget group on this now notice the part the item inventory item shows up as an item the assembly shows up as a single line and the group because I checked the field that said show the individual components shows up as individual lines with a single uh, kind of a uh, <laughs> with a single cost uh, and single total in there. Now, if I print this, let's have a look at how it how it looks when I preview it. Notice when I show the individual items in a group, it does total the actual individual costs. Let's go back and look at this one more time. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to come down here to the widget group and I'm going to uncheck print items. And then I'm going to put a blank line in and I'm going to put a widget group on here. Notice that it says you can't sell five of these. That's okay. And sorry. I need to get out of this and get back, and now I should have, hang on just a second, something didn't work like it was supposed to. Okay, that is cleared. All right, let's put the widget group on again. All right, and then let's do a print preview. And you'll notice on this, we do not see the individual items in the group, even though they show on our individual entry screen. We do need to make sure that we get the sale price to what it needs to be um, for us. By the way, if you change something like that to widget group from print to don't print, um, you actually it gets locked in when the item is added to the sales order. So you'll have to go back and delete the old item off the sales order and put the new one on. All right, so a group is just a quick shorthand way to enter items on a sales order. Now, um, let's have a look at the assembly. An assembly is different because in order to make some of an assembly, in order to have it uh, in stock, we actually have to tell the system that we want to do an inventory activity. We actually have to build the assembly. And so we pick the widget package and we say that uh, we want to build, let's say, 10 of these. And it says, I don't have enough to make this so I can do pending when I actually build it it will put 10 of this item in as a widget assembly or widget package in this case and it will reduce the item the other items in the assembly at this point I don't have enough to make it so it won't let me so I'm not going to post it because it would throw inventory negative but that's the difference between an assembly and a group and I see that we're about out of time. I want to show you one other thing um, quickly that has to do with pricing. So let's take a look at price levels. One of the things you notice when you look at price levels in QuickBooks is you can have a markup or markdown kind of price group. Let's do a new one. So I can say markup. And I can do a fixed percentage or I can do per item. If I do percentage, I can do markup or markdown. And I can give it a percentage and that will apply to all the items. However, if I'm a typical, say, distribution business, I may have a situation in which I charge 10% below uh, list price for type A customers for door products, but I charge 20% below list price for type A customers for widget products. So in other words, I've got different discount amounts for different customers. The only way I can do that 
is to have uh, customer type A, I can do a per item discount. And then I can say, let's say the 10% discount is the majority. So I'm going to set this to be 10% and hit adjust. And it actually, you can see this is the regular price. It goes through and calculates the adjusted price at 10% discount. Now for those items, let's say this particular item, the customer gets a 20% discount. You see 350, so they actually get $7 off this item, which would make it 28. Then I have to go in manually and change these discounts. Let's say this would be 400 on that. And this is the only way you can actually change the percentage per item. Now let's have a look here at um, at this item that's $400. Notice that's cabinets. All right, let's go back to the cabinet item list. And I'm going to find cabinets. And here are the cabinets. Those are $500. And let's look at uh, changing this to $600. Okay, now at $600, a 20% markdown or discount should give me a price of $480, right? So I'm going to say OK. It says you may want to update your custom prices based on the new standard price. However, notice that when I go in here to my price lists, and I look at that customer type A, the cabinet price does not change automatically. You have to go in here and actually make it $480. Now, by the way, Data Gattis Group has an extension for QuickBooks that will do this for you. If you're interested, give us a call. But that's one of the very common issues that we find with QuickBooks inventory. So that's a quick 20-minute introduction to inventory. We'll take a look at some other items in the next few months. Um, and if you have any questions or need any support or thinking about uh, switching from QuickBooks Enterprise because you can't get some particular function that you need, give us a call. Very often we can create something economical that will solve the problem without you needing to switch products. Here are my Here's my contact information. I'm Bob Palmer. I am a CPA and Certified Information Technology Professional with Data Guidance Group and would love to hear from you. Thanks for attending. We do appreciate it.